Welcome back. In this video, we'll talk about sepsis, septic shock, and systemic inflammatory response. Sepsis is defined as having a bacterial infection, mostly involving the bloodstream, associated with end organ dysfunction. A septic shock, however, is defined as having sepsis with vital instability, like hypotension, and lactate more than 18 mg per deciliter. Unlike sepsis, a septic shock is very serious, and the mortality rate is more than 40%. End organ dysfunction is mostly confirmed by LFTs, renal function test, or lactate. An increase in any one of those confirms end organ dysfunction. Systemic inflammatory response is a reaction to sepsis, and it presents with either hypo or hyperthermia, leukocytosis or leukopenia, tachycardia, tachypnea, confusion, and hyperglycemia. Keep in mind, the hyperglycemia should stay between 180 to 200, and you should maintain this hyperglycemic state. Only use insulin if the levels are too high, more than 300. There is a specific criteria that we use to determine the prognosis of sepsis, called the quick sofa criteria. This identifies the life-threatening sepsis. The patient is considered critical if they have two or more of the following, confusion, hypotension, and tachypnea. Sepsis, which mostly starts as pneumonia, is the most common cause of non-cardiac death in patients admitted to the hospital. To treat sepsis, the most important thing is to eliminate the cause of infection or the source of infection. For example, if the patient has a gangrenous toe, it must be amputated. Or if there is a perforated appendix or diverticulitis, it has to be treated before initiating anything else. And then the patient has to be given antibiotics, intravenously of course, along with intravenous fluids and vasopressors to increase the blood pressure. And here's a small quiz. Which of the following medications is used to prevent tumor lysis syndromes in patients taking chemotherapy? And the answer is allopurinol. Thank you so much for watching.